Stephen. We're on. Oh, yeah, we're live. We are live. Uh, welcome. Yesterday, I introduced uh, my eldest to Ric Flair. Oh, yeah. On YouTube. Having yeah. a hard yeah. time <laughs> holding these alligators down. <laughs> I can't stop sharing them. I, just, I have to keep him within two, three days of my Facebook stories just so I can get a bit of morale through the week. I absolutely love it. Quality. Quality. Right, I was, uh, mate, early start. Early start for, for me. Why, my, my sound of headphones is weird now. Ah, we're back in. Early, early yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, early, early start for me. You, well, uh, well for Forces Barbarians Day, mate. It is, yeah. I'm we fully branded up. I'm looking forward to it. I was a uh, little drive down here and I was greeted with my opposite number, who Hugh just showed me um, from the tr- tr- transatlantic team. The fucking Fijian version of Jason Momoa. Yeah, let's, do, let's just say <laughs> if he was on Tinder. His body type would be brick shit house. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Looks like Rikishi from the WWE, if anyone remembers who Rikishi is. He's, a, I don't know his name, he's ex Royal Welsh. Uh, he's ex Royal Welsh, he's, and he's captain, he's centre of Excellent. the Pacific Islanders rugby club today. Your Super. opposite number. Mate, you're going to be, you're going to be like folded in half. Yeah, well, he's looking to look at me, thinking I'm the shit with my John Rambo t shirt on. And he's, and he's going to realise I haven't played for about 15, 16 years. Never played centre. Probably don't even remember the rules of it, but there you go. We'll see how we get on. Be right. Yeah. Be right. And I'd, uh, on the way down here, it's quite funny. I know you talk uh, a lot of on this podcast about kids and their phones and this, that, and the other. On the way down here on the M6, there was a, there was a, a van, uh, Renault Traffic, that had his fr- the front of it taken off. They'd been in an accident, right? It wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but it was still an accident. And I was driving past, and they clo- the police or whatever and the driver's standard agency had closed the road off for people to go around into one lane. And there was a lad who was obviously the driver. He wasn't, I'm, I'm presuming he wasn't shaken up or affected by it, but he was sat in the van just on his phone, just like this. You can't, like, you know, you can't, you've just been involved in a car accident, looked semi-serious, and he sat in the car in the van, playing on his phone, playing fucking Angry Birds or whatever he's doing, or fucking, <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, you know. But yeah. Play, playing Crossy Road. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but it could have been shock, mate. It could have been shock. I remember, um, people do weird things in shock, don't they? I was sat in Kate's house, right, and when she lived in a different place, and she was uh, on a busy, in, in Warwick, on Stratford Road, and right outside her house, these traffic lights, okay? And, um, just where p- for pedestrians crossing, not a junction, nothing like that. Anyway, sat there watching TV, mate. Massive kaboom crash, like fucking hell. I look out the window and I just see like bits of something going on the road. Obviously a car. So sprint out, bare feet, mate. Sprint out there, and this Mercedes had smashed straight into um, one of the uh, uh, traffic light yeah. poles, mate. Uh, mate, the poles like yeah, fucking whatever. The Mercedes was right off. like, oh, complete right off. But the guy. So the car was like in clip. I went round to the I went round to the driver's side to try and get in. Mate, the airbags on the Mercedes. My airbags came from everywhere, mate. I couldn't even get in because the, the, there was airbags from you know like the, where the handle is on the, above the door on the inside. Yeah. There was airbag had come from there. There's an airbag had come from like where the mirror is inside. The airbag had come from his um, wheel. There's an airbag come from where the uh, uh, seat belt comes from, mate. It was like Fort Knox run again. Yeah. So I went in the opposite side, and the car, the guy was just sat there, old guy. He was sat there. He just, he wasn't speaking. He was uh, wide, eyes wide open. Just, he was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, completely in shock, not doing anything. The car had realised it had a crash. Okay, the system, the music system, this it was, it, it dialed Mercedes Emergency Services wow. or whatever it is. I assume it was Mercedes thing. It had dialed and it was going, sir. Sir, are you okay? Have you had a crash? Sir, have you had an accident? Sir, sir, and I was there. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Yeah. <laughs> but he, he, he recognized the car had a crash and dialed for him. Wow. Yeah. Mate, how quality is that? Mercedes. Shout out to Mercedes. Woo! That's not even Tesla. <laughs> Shout out to Tesla. You need to get on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although Tesla had a crash the other day, didn't they? It's a driver, dri- dri- self-driving vehicle. I think it crashed. That happens all the time. Does it? it? I don't yeah, know. But it's, it's Mong's, mate. I wouldn't trust it. I, st- I wouldn't trust it one fucking bit. I've done it with. The, I've been in, the, in a Tesla where it drives itself. I went on a test driving one. Ask going like a, a few years nose. ago. A few years ago. Um, it was about four years ago. Uh, but it, at the time, it only worked. It, it basically the way it's the way they drive. 
It's got cameras on the outside, right? And the way it knows it's on the road, it's looking at the white lines. Um, and so if you go an area in this potholes or this or country roads, <laughs> you're not really doing that, mate. Yeah. But what about if the cameras fail, like Jeffrey Epstein's prison cell? <sighs> We're going deep. <laughs> We're going deep. <laughs> we have been going for five minutes, five Steve. Minutes, you dropped the <laughs> What are we talking about? What are we going to talk I th- about? I think, we should, I think one thing that we should talk about, which I find is fucking insane, is like the Pentagon, we've been discussing this before, has released statements basically saying, yeah, you know, there are UFOs out I there. I was thinking about this this morning on the drive to the garage. They're, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, basically yeah. telling everybody, yes, yes, there are UFOs, and nobody seems to care. Mate, 100%. I, I, I've, surprised, I've not surprised. It's like fucking, I was literally, before you got here, I drove to the garage, picked up some milk, and on my way back, I was thinking... No one's fucking realising no. that. And we're thinking, I think, oh, that's, that's, I think that's a tweet. I could yeah. tweet that. And it'd be like, uh, just, just your daily reminder that the, the that Pentagon have acknowledged that there is technology that is not from this world. They've acknowledged it. And like you said, no one cares. No one, no one cares. No one gives a fuck. Well, I think they do care, but it's been overshadowed by other stuff. Yeah. So like, the importance of it is just being completely undermined. Yeah. Wild. It is wild. I know what I care more about. What you fucking care aliens. About? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'd... Well, what? I got a theory on it. So you have like you got the um, you got the Neil uh, Tyson, uh, Degrassi Tyson opinion, which is like he doesn't believe in it, does he? No. Well, he says he doesn't because you listened to the last po- I think it was po- on the run of the Rogan podcast yeah. and we talked about him and, t- and and Rogan seems to think that Degrassi just towing the line. He doesn't want to like venture into because uh, maybe get take funding taken away from yeah, the whole, things like that, right? But it, the point he makes is why would they why would they be interested in us if they got on it? Why would they bother coming here? My theory is that it's us. The aliens are us. It's us from the future. That's the only oh, reason shit. they would. G- it's us from the future, mate. It's the only reason that. It would be- Why would they be interested, Steve? Why would they be interested? Well, me and Stu Hale. And if me and oh, Stu. I'll never forget God, this. Me and, Stu- <laughs> me and Stu Hale went for a run together <laughs> in Oman just before we deployed to Eric 4. And uh, <laughs> we bu- I mentioned this, and he just stopped running. He goes, That's exactly how, what, I, what I thought about. <laughs> and I, I think that they've put us here. And we're some sort of who, who the alien, who, the who alien, they? whoever's coming down to visit us, they're like just keeping tabs on us. Maybe we're, may, I don't know, maybe they f- found us on, we developed on their planet. Maybe they developed us on their planet, and they're like, what the fuck is this fucking thing? And you're like, right, what do they need to adapt or fucking breathe or live or whatever? Like, in what environment do they need? Let's fucking send them down there. Let's just and let's just see how they get on. And in, and it, as soon as we split the atom. There was a lot more traffic from them, weren't there? And maybe they thought these fucking lunatics are getting out of hand. Well, this is the thing. Yeah, of all of the, all of the. That's the other thing with it, isn't it? With all the, all the evidence. That's yeah. All, all of the. Ev- not, let's not say evidence, because it sounds like oh, it's. Uh, it sounds like it's not a true story, but probably is. So, everything that's what's known about when we st- first started recording, or realizing aliens were cutting about 1947, all started after 1947, yeah. when. Well, what? The what? The World War finished. The World War finished. We uh, we dropped and and we st- and nu- and basically nuclear arms race yeah. went up. Began. Began. And we started dro- and we started dro- dropping nukes everywhere. And then the aliens rock up yeah. like what the fuck? Because it says from the future. Because they want it. Because they trying to go oh, screw the fucking that. Because, but this use my theory on it. It says from the future, and they've realised shit. We've gone down a r- the wrong path here, and we're going to become extinct because of because of. That's the point we're at, which is why they're here now to try and change the course of history. That's my theory. One hundred percent, mate. One hundred percent. The other. It's eight thirty in the morning. The what other, are we talking the about? The other option. It's not the way it starts. The morning. other option it could be, where I, which I was thinking about the other day, is: <laughs> is it America fucking with us? Right. The Americans have fucked with us for years. Right. They, all, all right. But let's look at everything they've done. Right. Just look at all the conspiracies the Americans are involved in. You got fucking NORAD. You got Operation Midnight Climax. What's the NORAD? So Quite. NORAD is is not, NORAD's actually do to do nine eleven, right? This is why. The, the, fucking hell, here we go. Go for it, mate. So we'll we'll touch <laughs> into this if we get time with nine eleven anyway. But the nine eleven thing was Operation NORAD was a CIA and government uh, funded operation in like the sixties. And when people think that the nine eleven planes weren't the actual planes that took off in the first place, they were drones, right? Say that again. So say that again. So, so the, should I be taking the, notes? The F, the F, apparently the FBI had never questioned the um, legitimacy of the planes 
because it was never in doubt. They always, they just thought that they the, that, that was the plane that took off that the crash landed. But the people on the ground were sort of saying it didn't really look like a commercial airline. It looked like something you're different. You're not the Pentagon crash. No, I'm talking about the the 911 crash. Then the into the twin towers. Right. Right. But then and and then they sort of said, oh well, you know, we haven't got drones. You know, that's a fucking ridiculous theory. Right now, Operation NORAD in the 60s was they basically had created a drone aircraft and they were going to fly it over Cuban airspace, get fund radicals or fund, you know, the militia or whatever out there under Castro to shoot the plane down and then start and then start a war out in Cuba. That's Operation NORAD. And that was in the 60s. They had that. Did they achieve it, though? Because, mate, to fly a commercial plane, a size plane like that, is not simple. I mean, it's not hard now. They, 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 were, on the, they were en route somewhere. I can't remember where it was. The, they were sending the plane en route somewhere. That so was going, that was going, did, that was going via but, Cuba. So they achieved the technology to fly the plane? Yes. The te- that technology was in the 60s, was where they were able to fly the plane like that. And right, so we're going back to, back to that. So there's, there's nor This is what the Americans, they're fucking dirty, aren't they? So you got the the got NORAD. We're probably not much better. We're, we're involved with quite, quite, probably quite a lot of conspiracies. But you got like, uh, obviously, you got NORAD, like I just mentioned. The, the Midnight Climax. You, you know about that one. No, you? go on. Fuck it. Have you not heard about Midnight Climax? I'm going to have a terrible memory. You probably so, told so, me so it's a rambling yeah, fucking. Midnight message. Climax was, there was that bloke, some, something O'Neill, that did the book on Manson. And he was on, he was on the Rogan podcast, and he mentioned about the midnight climax, and it was the drug test. Yeah, where they yeah. were, it was, and they, they were bringing these VIPs, MPs, whatever they were, to a whorehouse, drugging them with LSD. Senators, senators, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah they're senators, governors, etc. So, and he was, they were nailing these fucking uh, late females in this in the, in the in the brass house, and they were drugging them with LSD, and then they were video recording them through a room like a glass screen. And the, the ladies were getting them to tr- do something, and you know, uh, trying to uh, corrupt their mind into doing what they want, like like the Mancunian candidate type of type of stuff. And they were involved in that. No, but that but that was an experiment over decades, right? Yeah, it went for decades, yeah. didn't it? And Manson allegedly could w- do it anyway, couldn't he? Without like, well, he was a manipulative, mega yeah. manipulator. Yeah. But Manson allegedly was on part of this program, but then basically flew off the fucking handle and started yeah. doing crazy stuff. Didn't yeah. He? But he, but he, uh, apparently he could get these women to do what he wanted without the well, use of cult. drugs. It was a cult. Yeah. Right? It was a cult. But and, and they, they vi- the CIA were visiting him in prison as well. It's fucking insane. The Americans are so. I need to read dead. that book actually. Yeah. Have you read it? No. No, but I'm gonna get hold of it. I think because mm. very interesting. Because I think that even that O'Neill went to go and visit the Manson as well, and there was records of CIA agents going to visit Manson in prison. How fucked up is that? Yeah. That's fucking crazy. So you got them. They're just they're constantly involved in something, aren't they? Always fucking Libya, fucking Iraq, Afghanistan. They always have to be involved in something. There's always something fucking going on. Even um, the COVID thing. Even the, the COVID lab is American funded, isn't it? That's come out recently. What do you mean the COVID lab? So, so do you know the, the 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 Wuhan lab? That's American funded. No. Are you are you for are you not here about this? Uh, where have you read this though? That was on the recent podcast that I sent you of that crystal ball and how funny how great. I listened to that podcast. Yeah, yeah, they talk about it on there. The the lab is American funded. Nah, it's funded by I American money. Bit. I missed that bit. Yeah, it's funded by America. A very American funded lab. I'm fucking telling you, go back and listen to it. It's legit. That's mental. How, they're involved in everything. Well, do you know? Remember I said about that, that book I wanted to give you which I haven't finished reading yet, but I will do. And it's um, it's called How the World Works, right? And it's by Noam Chomsky, which I've not really heard of. I mean, apparently he's mega famous. I only heard of him about six months ago. I think I think Gaz, uh, Gaz Walsh may have mentioned it to me, maybe. Um, and the, the How the World Works is actually, is, it's the book is about, it's, it's four of his books that he's done previously, 60s, 70s, maybe not, 70s, 80s, 90s, and they're all, in the, anyway, it talks about how and why people do things. It's about America, mate. And w- the bit I'm on at the minute is it's about how they maintain control over what's going on and how they, they wha- how and why they stifle democracies when they're about to happen. Because it's easy to control a, an unstable country yeah. with a lunatic dictator in charge. Regime change. Saddam, for example. Yeah. What's his name? Gaddafi, for example. Um, 
to control it like that. So dictator in place, unstable, unstable economy, because they can make money like that. They control, they can control it. Because if there's an emergence of a, 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 dem a democracy comes about, it, it would grow to become a threat to the state. So yeah. they try and play these things down, keep them fucking lunatics. And then when they can't control them, that's when they're going and smash the place up. Yeah. Again, Iraq, Libya. It's really interesting, yeah. mate. Really, Panama, yeah. Nicaragua. Yeah. Really interesting. But it's one of those regions you go, oh man, it's depressing. It's like so depressing. Why yeah. can't the world just be normal? Well, like, I was, I was <laughs> thought, I was thought about like the American war budget is fucking enormous, isn't it? Right, yeah. like their fucking budget is ridiculous. I always thought they they get all these missiles, bombs, etc. Built right, everything has a shelf life. Okay, so they get all this money spent on all these bombs, etc. They're in storage. Someone comes round when the budget's about to come round, and they go, "Why are you spending fucking ten billion quid on fucking war, on missiles? We're not in war. You know they're going to run out. You can't just get rid of them, can you? You can't just decommission them and get rid of them because they'll go, well, hang on, but we don't need bombs anymore. Don't need bomb money. So they just, I don't know, it's weird, isn't it? They're like, oh, so should we fucking use these then before they run out of days? So then it keeps the war machine going then, doesn't it? They go, all right, we've run out of bombs now, so we'll fucking get more bombs in. And it keeps the funding going. So they have to create something to use. Mm. I always thought that was very peculiar. Well, that's just a... But it's, but money, it, but it, yeah, but, it's, if, but if you're spending money, but then if, if you can't, if there's no money for children to go to college... Like Bernie Sanders, typical example, Be wanted cool. 50 billion quid for funding when he was to be prime, uh, president to send kids to school for fuck all. And they're going, where are you going to get 50 billion from? It's fucking crazy. Where are you going to get the money to do that? And then Trump, the, like the week after, signed a fucking $150 billion deal to, for uh, research into fucking drones and shit like that. It's like, where you get, what do you mean? He wanted, when they want bomb money or they want war money, they fucking got it. They got it in copious amounts, but when somebody wants it to better someone's life, nah, nah, nah. well, right. it's not in the interests of the American economy to have a, a improved, general uh, like average health of the population. No. Not in interest at no. all, because of the way their private healthcare system. Because of the healthcare system, unbelievable. My brother-in-law. We don't realize how well we got it over here. My brother-in-law described America to a fucking T. He goes, "It's a third. <laughs> he goes, it's a third world country with a Gucci belt on." <laughs> And he just goes, this, this, if, you, if you didn't say, right, what name, name this country, no healthcare, civil fucking, not civil war, unrest. but un, civil unrest, racism fucking rife through. I know, I know what you're saying, but there's like BLM, you know, there's opposite movements, you know, storming fucking buildings, no healthcare system, like I said, just chaos. You'd think like an African nation or something like that, wouldn't you? You think of like a deprived nation with a lot of fucking corruption and stuff like that. that that's, that's fucking what it is. Yeah, it's a good point. It's Gucci good point. belt. Gucci belt. Gucci belt. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. The uh, mate, that that, that Capitol Hill um, storm. And I mean, you, again, that's another thing. I think people don't realize how how important that is and how, how dangerous it is. How dangerous that is because it'll happen again. Yeah, I mean. And it and it shows to other countries that, like like Britain, like France, like countries that are first world countries, that is is achievable. Mm. It's dangerous because you the, the, you get the unruly, the lunatics part of society yeah. who want to switch things up because they think they're flipping oppressed or whatever. You get, I mean, I, imagine Westminster being taken over like that. It nearly imagine does. that. When. When that fucking lunatic tried storming it and stab, start stabbing people up, that, that's that that's come very per close. I know, but he, one person, how far did he get? Got all the way to the door. Yeah, but he was Muslim extremist, wasn't he? Yeah, but you throw another five on there, give him another five blokes. Yeah, but Capitol Hill, mate, was like hundreds of people. But, yeah, but what? Do you know what I found very peculiar? And they were, and they were the police Americans. opened the fucking gate. That's what I found very fucking strange. They did. There was footage of them just I going saw like this it. and yeah, opening I the gate. I saw it. But do you know what? I, do you know what I think happened there? Is Agent provocateur. No, what I think happened there was um, it was a call made in the ground. Was there was they, they weren't. It was a case of right, you ain't gonna be able to hold that line. You only the only a couple of guys there. Or they're gonna get in. That crowd's gonna get in. So instead of you getting battered and run over, right, leave the gate, let them come in. You get back here and no, withdraw. No, fighting withdraw. I don't. I don't believe that. They got fucking. They got pistols on their hip. Pull a pistol out. Just take another step and I'm going to gun you down. Yeah, but again, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. But then there's a the danger of you drop someone in that situation, mate. That you, you escalate the situation in a, in a massive well, way. Well, uh, uh, what's, what's more 
Well, it's already been going to escalate. They stormed the building. So, what do you want? What you, would you rather one dead body on your hand or several in, in, in there? Because that's what happened, mm. wasn't there? There were several dead bodies. There's people dying of a heart attack in there, you know. I heard about it. Yeah. People, because yeah. they were so fucking excited. <laughs> they couldn't believe their fucking <laughs> luck. Mental. Yeah. But that, uh, have you heard of Agent Provocateur? That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a fucking good have one. Have I read it? No, but have you, no, have you, you, it, you obviously yeah. know about it, yeah. But the. the where they used to get people infiltrating gangs, that, not gangs, into protests, peaceful protests, and then rile them up. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. Or they, well, either rile them up. So, do you or know, or cause I, the drama, yeah. Yeah. So, do, so for, for people who don't have a clue what I'm talking about, agent provocateur is like a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a method that uh, the American government did. I think the British government did as well. But anyway, it's a, it's a method that has been like admitted, and it's a method they use where you'll have a peaceful protest going on. An example was uh, Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. That was an example. So. A peaceful protest. They just sat in the. They were just sat in the streets. They blocked off Wall Street, didn't they? Um, and essentially, there was nothing to be done about it because you, you send police in to go and flipping like, uh, what you call it, um, strong arm them out, and then it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you just make it even bigger. You're you're being uh, abusive and all yeah. the rest of it. So, so agent provocateurs, where the government will send in, uh, or the authorities will send in, pr- government agents. Basically, police officer, pri- yeah, yeah, or pr- or people just fucking paid to go in and do yeah. it, like ex mill and stuff like that, to go in as protesters, but start being violent, smashing shops up, so just getting violent because then that turn it's gives not a peaceful protest anymore. It's a violent protest, and then it gives the excuse for the police to go in and remove yeah. everywhere. It gives them a green light to Agent go in and, uh, and, and get rid of it. Happened loads of times, yeah. And I think that was I think Alex Jones uh, uncovered that. Oh, God. I know he's. I know he's a bit mad, but he's got. A, he's got a lot of things right. He's got a lot of things correct, which is fucking terrifying, really, when you think about it. Someone as mad as him is getting a lot of the stuff right. Like he got that. He didn't get nine eleven right, but he's, he he said that. Well, what did he say about nine eleven? He said he said that they will. Some somebody will hit the most uh, like prestigious or most you know well known building in New York, and 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 he goes, "We know we we're gonna you're gonna use Osama bin Laden as the fall guy." He said this before then. No. How far before? Swear, uh, a couple, maybe a year or so before, like two thousand. Christ, crazy. He, so, he, he what uncom- did he get wrong? Uh, the he's, he's admitted he got it wrong. Was the Sandy Hook shooting? Oh, that. Yeah, 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 he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. that was a bit yeah. fucking naughty. That, but like he got the he got that right. Then he got the fucking Epstein. He was talking about Epstein well before it came out. Was he? Yeah. Are you, when he was on Rogan's nine eleven podcast, so nine one one podcast, he was talking about it then. How long ago was that? Six, seven years ago? Yeah. And, jo- and Joe was saying he was mentioning that even before then, before he mentioned it on the podcast. It's fucking, and he gets things right. And then there's Bohemian Grove, the Bohemian Grove thing. He got, he fucking uncovered that. Like, he's not full of shit, this guy. He fucking knows what he's doing. There was one mad one, wasn't there, that he fucking, <laughs> that he talked about where the Chinese, he goes, and the Chinese are um, splicing human DNA with pig DNA to make an <laughs> animal pig hybrid. And it's like, fuck it. And then did the fucking Google, and the Chinese were doing it, getting human. Like I don't know if they were taking human genes or whatever, pig genes, and trying to make a um, male, a human p- pig fucking hybrid. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know how we uncovered that. that. I don't what, know. What? It's just the Chinese just fucking doing the Chinese stuff, don't they? Human. Maybe, maybe they want to fucking eat it. I don't know. Human pig hybrid. Yeah. I wonder what, what would be the benefits of that. I don't know. What would that animal be able to do that we can't? I don't know. Uh, sniff, ma- sniff, find truffles without making a mess. <laughs> Eat shit. Eat shit. Eat shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Desecrate every field in the fucking in Warwickshire. The clever aren't they, pigs? Yeah, they're meant to be clever. Yeah, very, very territorial. Very tasty. Very uh, delicious. Yeah. Don't tell cheesy that. Are they territorial? Don't tell cheesy that. Don't tell cheesy. Yeah. Well, they had to try it. So if a pig, go, if a pig goes into a pen that's, that wasn't there before, the other pigs will attack it and fucking they'll go sick on it, take chunks out of it. Very territorial animal. And that's literally got a pen there and a pen here. And they live within fucking spitting distance. But if he goes in there by accident, they'll attack him. They'll go fucking mad. What do you think about COVID, mate? What, uh, uh, serious. We well, mentioned Wuhan. Um, I don't know. So we, yeah. What do you think about... Do you think lab made... Do, how, just tell me. What's your theory behind it? How it came to be released? I don't know, mate. It's a difficult one. Difficult to say without getting in trouble. Well, no, but you can just just give yourself a disclaimer every time. I, I think it's fucking. I think it's. <laughs> I think it's real. I always think it's real. But I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know that much about it. I'd be. Made, I'd be talking shit. But 
What do you mean you've been talking shit? Like I do it all the time, mate. I get things wrong all the time. It's fine. The, the longer the longer it's, the longer it's gone on, and now I now I've heard that the Americans are, are funded the, the lab. It just I don't like the Americans in hands with anything. I always think there's something fucking fishy going on. Pass me that water, yeah. What mine? Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's like when you look at all the when you look at all the wealth that's been made by all these large corporations. I know it's, they say, oh, well, you know, the large corporations have got to stay open, as do Tesco, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Amazon's made a fucking, his wealth grew by 70 billion or something like that. I, mean, I, I think that the, the, when it's got, the, this COVID's got released, or, you know, it just escaped, whatever it did, the wealthy, the super wealthy, the MPs, are using leg, COVID legislation for, a, maybe for a, a, a test of power, Letting them know what how they can treat us if they can lock us away for a certain amount of time or whatever. I don't see the benefit in locking everyone away. I really don't. It. What, what's the benefit of keeping everyone locked up? The, the the tests are a bit fucking funny as well, aren't they? The PCR tests. So me me, me missus got a test at home. Her mum got her a test. Her mum works at the hospital, and she had, had like a test. And it was negative, and then she was on, staying at her mum's. And then she went straight from her mum's, never went to any shop, went straight to the COVID lab test place. I think it's the same test. Got a test and she was positive. There's like countless like test stories of people having it and people not. It's fucking strange. But, but back to the back to the the, um, the origins of it or whatever. The lab's named COVID, isn't it? The lab's named the COVID Research Center. What the I don't fuck? know. I heard the same podcast. Yeah. They said that, but I don't know if that's fair. Yeah, well, it's, but it it's, probably is. Yeah, like. allegedly it's named the fucking COVID lab, isn't yeah. it? But I mean, isn't that fucking suspicious already? I mean, the te- what the fuck? What the fuck happened? How the fuck did it escape? Well, I think it was. A, I think it was a. I I think it, it's like ev- all the evidence points to it came from that fucking lab. But there was. I a, think it was accidentally, accidentally, and the Chinese tried to cover it up. That's why, because because they would, because you wouldn't, because they would, they would want to cover it up. They wouldn't go on and go. Oh yeah, we were testing shit in there and actually got out and we've created a, a global pandemic. Um, but, 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 then what, what about numbers? Uh, what's the point of talking about the numbers? Like the Chinese have got, what have they got? Fucking two billion people? 4,000 have died? <laughs> oh, fucking two billion people? Because they, they had the advantage of being forewarned. They knew what was going on. They knew what had been released. They knew how to control it. That's why. Okay, well, if this American-funded lab, surely the Americans know what's in there as well then, don't they? So if it's getting released, the Americans know exactly what they're dealing with. Mm, maybe. You know? If the Americans are funding it, the Americans are going to go, okay, what is this? You know, what are you researching? They want to know everything. I'm sure there'd be Americans there. There'd be American agents there overlooking everything. What that, what that is there, if it's an American-funded lab in China, what does that tell you? They're working together. No, not necessarily, mate. Of course it has we've to got, be. We've got, the UK has investments in China in different industries and sectors and different things. And uh, again, it, it, in, so the question is, in what context, if they have got investment or uh, in that, lab in what context are there other nations with an investment in that lab because it's a bio research good, center good, good question you know um it could be uganda you don't fucking know do you uganda might give them i don't know fucking 10 grand or whatever just for a bit of research you don't know do you but mm. yeah it's all very fucking strange whenever americans are involved the I only thing go, is mm. with it right is that on on the subject of it being intent because there is that conspiracy theory oh there is oh, i fucking hate saying conspiracy theory there is that um, people have this idea that maybe it was intentionally released. Again, for what you were saying there, um, intentionally released to to for as a global test. Well, to exercise control. Yeah, we've got a problem in the UK where there's been a lot of civil unrest oh, before the pandemic, right? Just you know, things that things have been slipping a little bit in terms of how, um, how what's the word? How um, content society are. America is even worse, mm. right? Um, so there is that idea that we was released with, no, not that it was released, but when it was released, that that the situation was used to take it, it was taken advantage of in order to, like you were saying, to exercise control, to get more control of the population, not not to, not to, I think get the population to, as in, I mean, like UK or America, any population of a country, right? Not to get us to do what they want us to do, so to 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 control our actions, but to make us more predictable. It's not It's not possible to get people to do what... The government couldn't, could, like, I don't think, could turn around and get us <coughs> all to end up, I don't know, 
fucking only having one kid, for example. For example, right? Not for, they wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, even if you try to bring in legislation, it wouldn't happen. The Chinese achieved it, right? But we, we they wouldn't be able to do it here. But what they can do with, like with, with now, with these, with these powers that they've, with the, with in response to the pandemic, lockdown, etc., which I absolutely, I'm not questioning. I, you know what I think. I think it was all necessary, right? But it makes us, we, we're now more compliant, right? Which makes us more predictable. Yes. And when we're predictable, you can, when something's predictable, you can, you can take advantage of that and capitalize from it, especially where money's concerned. Yeah. You know, and votes are concerned. But it didn't, but it, did, it still didn't stop anyone doing what they really wanted to do. Well, it created more problems. This is the thing with America. It's like, because of the way they're set up, with all the different stakes and do what they want, and the situation they're good in going into it, it just made it worse. Yeah. It's made it worse. And their response to the pandemic was horrendous because just different states were doing what, different, what they wanted, wh- whatever they wanted, not, going, not doing what was best for the country. Loads of... Fuck- well, in some situations, you had, you know, a lot of people died who didn't need to die. In other situations... I'm talking about different systems. In yeah. other situations, they went completely over the top and it's still going to completely over the top and it's decimating the economy because it, they, they've been too strong with their measures. Yeah. You know, it's... A, it's a, I wouldn't want to... Li- I mean, it's a cool place, <laughs> America, to visit. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to live there. No way. I, I, think, I think definitely there's been a lot of pressure put on the government from large corporations as well for them to stay open. Like you got McDonald's, Mc, fucking McDonald's is. Don't tell me McDonald's is essential or KFC is essential. Did Macca do shut? If they did, they certainly opened very fucking shortly. I think they did shut, but they opened. I wonder. I think I think they said that the uh, inside shut. I know that. I wonder if the drive through. You, you could shut. do you could do a drive through, yeah. All the way through the pandemic. I'm, I don't know. No fucking I don't way. Know. I don't. Th- maybe not. But but they told everyone to stay at home, so surely you couldn't. Surely they weren't open. They had, a, they had a complete lockdown at one point, didn't they, where everybody had to stay in their fucking house. I wonder if it's an essential business. It's not, though, is it? And that, that has been over for a majority Mate, of the amount of time. W. H. Smith stayed the, open. W. H. Smith stayed open. W. H. Smith never closed. No. Uh, essential business. Well, don't, it's fucking it's note, got good fucking note sandwich, pads and Christmas it. cards, yeah, mate. That's it. Mad. Crazy. But why? Why Why? why, why does uh, Andy's... Because, I got to, because, like you said, money. Exactly. Money. And again, it, it's... Uh, this is... A, that's what I think. It's the situation being taken advantage of by, <coughs> by people who need capital, by people who, who've got the money. Yeah. Again, going back to the pharmaceuticals, especially in America, just the more unhealthy a nation is, the more money it is for, pharma, yeah. for big pharma. Yeah. It's in the, that, it's, that's why it's shit in food's so cheap it, and good food's so expensive. It's in their interests to have an unhealthy nation. Mm. <laughs> it's really if a, everyone's it, healthy, yeah. no one needs medicine. Mm. Like, you know, we, we, again, we don't realize like we got yeah. it in the UK. Uh, absolutely. Not. If COVID's done anything, it'll wake people up to look after your health a little bit. Mm. You know, stop going to fucking McDonald's, m- make your own food. You know, go for a fucking run. I had macadies yesterday. Smoke a cigar. Delicious. Smoke a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come cigars. Don't cut it. Come cigars. Don't cut it. My specials of victory. I go for that. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, what shoe? So. You was, this is your first business, right? How, how long have we got before I can go into 9-11? How long are we going for? Because I would like to talk about 9-11. Oh, right? Go for it then. No, yeah. no, no, you say what you want to say. We'll, maybe we'll go at the end. Okay. Um, we are, what, six months into uh, going into business together? Yeah. You, me and Jared. Yeah. This is your, this is your first foray in the set of a business? Am I yes, right? yes. How have you found it? I found it all right, mate. You do a lot of that fucking hard work. You do a lot of the Certainly hard do. work. Shout, <laughs> shout, shout out to Hugh. He does a lot of the hard work. I, I, I come up with the idea. J- Jared was involved with it, who also said they don't do it military, or it isn't a military fucking cigar sort of brand. And that's where it stemmed from, really. I'm enjoying it. I'm gutted. never had the idea, mate. I know. I'm so pissed off. I say it regularly. Do you? Yeah. I, I'm very creative. I'm very creative. I come up with all sorts of fucking ideas. I know, we've been talking about half of it. Check, check. <laughs> <laughs> like, check, let's check this. Like, I come up with a fuck. I always thought I'd be a great comedy writer. Right, and I come, I just I was just sat there one day, and this was one, one TV show I thought of. I'd maybe like a, a bit like an Only Fools and Horses kind of British drama, a British comedy show. And it'd be, one of them would be like a handyman who is just shit at fucking everything. And he just does <laughs> odd jobs for cheap, undercuts every, all the fucking tradesmen. And I come up with one, what was the other day? I don't even know how I thought of this. I think it was at a kid's birthday party. It, it involves, it was at my son's birthday party. And I saw a kid, he had his top off, about six years old, chasing bubbles from the bubble machine. And he was going 
ape shit over these bubbles. He's loving it. I'm yeah, loving no, no, he's it. loved it. Just trying pushing kids out of the way, trying to get them all. And I just thought, <laughs> imagine at this TV show, this DIY man, and it's like a social club. It's cheap. It's like Phoenix Nights type thing. And the Andy man came in to fix a toilet, but he had somehow put the plumbing in with the fucking bubble machine. <laughs> And these kids were running around, <laughs> eating little shit bubbles, little diarrhea shit bubbles. And you just see this kid running around and going, and then going, Spitting and all out. the parents like going, and you just smell a shit going through the air. I just thought of that just off the cuff. <laughs> I've got, I'd made a little sketchbook of loads of different episodes. Oh, yeah, you got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the one that always sticks in mind because that was the first one I thought of. I've always been very creative. I can think, I've just always been like, why that. don't you do comedy then? Have you ever, pra- have you ever practiced stand up? Have you ever practiced it? <sighs> I was great at Hugh at Luke's. That was a good speech, man. That was a great speech. That was. A, I've never cringed so much in my life. Yeah. Uh, for the for the bride and groom. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was fucking yeah. But have you ever done like have you ever like, no? I have thought sat about in your, it. Sat in your living room. And done, I, have, like, I have thought about it about doing it. Just going to Manchester and just uh, doing like a standout night. I, I have thought about it, but I'm, man, I'm offensive. I'm really offensive. Yeah, but that rolls today, mate. You could Not, get. Mm. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I think. I think at the moment we. We are, we've gone through about two years, three longer than that, three or four years of crazy down the like political correctness route, comedy being a drama, everyone being offended by everything. Get fucking, I don't even explain it. Everyone knows like what what the sketch is. I think we're coming out of that now. Yeah, I think there's a backlash against it. Uh, like with, woke comedy in it. Yeah. yeah, like I was saying to was I saying it to the other day. I realised it was about a week ago. That uh, you remember all the cultural cultural appropriation bullshit. Mm. Remember that? that that was rife at one point. Mm. Like someone wearing dreadlocks to get beasted yeah. for <laughs> cultural appropriation. What are you talking about? I know. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, and I realised it was about a week ago. Yeah, that I haven't seen any exact. I haven't seen that at all in any news. No one getting accused of it. I haven't seen it on social media. All that bullshit. Well, at one point, we couldn't get away from it. Yeah. It was mental, and that's gone away because. Yeah. It's bollocks. It's bollocks. But then, the, the, then, the, then I did see something a day later with Chloe. I think it's Chloe Kardashian, Kardashian got accused of, of cultural appropriation yeah. of the because of dreadlocks. Yeah. Well, trust Justin Trudeau got it, didn't he? The Canadian president. He's fucking. There was he one of him. He deserves it. He's, he's got. He had one of being a Muslim. He's dressed as Aladdin. I know he's not even sure Aladdin is a Muslim, is he? He's fucking. Is Aladdin uh, come from Egypt? Arab. Could, Arab. Yeah, he's Arab. Arab. Uh, well, it, well, first off, he's an invented character. Yeah. <laughs> <Doesn't exist. laughs> it's not even real yeah. but yeah anyway but I think we're on the up the point going back I think we're, I think I think we're on the way out of it. it I think that um, the, the, where the wind's gone from the sails it's not going anywhere it's, it just it just completely counterproductive it's like the oh, it's just stupid mate it's just yeah. stupid why like the pronoun thing pisses me off I don't mind that right but but I, I, I've got no issue again I've got no issue with people like want it to be called whatever they want to be called. Oh, the pro- I don't have a problem, but it's where it's the it's where you get people who are banging on about pronouns and just doing it for v- virtue signaling. Yeah. If you look like a bloke and you dress like a bloke and you talk like a bloke, or your fucking Twitter image looks like a bloke, you do not need to put in anything. Your pronouns are he him. Yeah. yeah. No shit. No shit. Why are you saying that? It's only one reason you're saying that. Virtue signaling. Attention. You're not, it's not helping anything. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You only need to announce your... Pro- you don't need to announce your pronouns. But if you want to, you only need to do it if they aren't he, him, or she, her. Yeah. You don't need to do it. Fucking mental. Remember the Jeremy Corbyn video? Did you see that? No. Oh, I love Labour sometimes, mate. He did this video, and it was a, it was a, it was a promo video. And at the end, he said... Uh, yeah, my 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 Jeremy called my pronouns are he him. <laughs> like, Fucking what? Jesus Christ, it's mad! It's, it's obvious what you're doing. You're just trying to you're just trying to get yourself on the right side. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's that, mate. What? It, I'm you, loving all. I'm, I'm loving I'm, all these. I never, I never express opinions about this normally. You get, you speaking get of M- the MPs, yeah. or I love like, everyone. I love everyone. Whatever your pronouns are. Speaking of MPs, my pronouns are he him. Dropping themselves in the shit or whatever. Talking about Mang Hancock at the minute. I'm loving, uh, l- loving these right. fucking pictures and stuff what like happened that. there he was caught about a month ago necking on with uh with some bird who works at the house of Commons. that's not his wife and she's a bit of a fox i don't know i've not i seen think she is yeah this year. he did well yeah 
Gina well, Caladangelo or something. She, might something be, like she that. looks Indian though, I think. Yeah, but she looks like a bit of a fox. I don't know. Yeah, I just hear. I think so. Okay. And he's not. I mean, he's not the most exciting, you know, p- man, is yeah, he? Yeah. Wonder what her pronouns. He's are. no, uh, you know, Jason Momoa. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the, the 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 memes and that are coming out are fucking great. My favourite one is where they've molded his face on Tolstin Powers and hers. And God, there's oh, fucking yeah. the Tory that shagged me. It's fucking, <laughs> fucking brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the best thing to come out of the internet, that. Is fucking memes, memes. and gifs and shit like that. Yeah, I was thinking of having a wall in the studio with my favourite memes on. Yeah. But it, it, the studio would just covered in memes because every single one is my favourite. Yeah. Like, like some of the Combat Cigars ones on Instagram. Like, anyone who, uh, if any, if anyone who's aware of Combat Cigars and is listening or watching this, right? We've got an Instagram account. Don't go on it if you're easily offended. Steve runs the Instagram account, and it is absolutely lethal. Lethal. I have when I see a notification saying "Combat Cigars" as posted a timeline. Roll your I have, eyes. I have, my heart rate goes up. Man. Oh God! What's he done now? What's he posted now? <laughs> there, there is one that's in the that's in my phone, and I'm just I'm under strict, strict. <laughs> may or may not involve a big black uh, uh, porn big, star. Yeah, big black porn star. <laughs> And the, and the time scale on how would, how long it would take you to smoke it. <laughs> I won't. I'm not going to. <laughs> but yeah, right. Uh, can we go? Uh, 9/11. Yeah. Can we go touch on. it? Right. So yeah, uh, Hughes always known me as being a bit of a 9/11 conspiracy Ken. So I um, like. When did you saw 9/11? Not happened. I always remember it. I was on a school bus going home from school, and I genuinely was like, I'm from a very poor town anyway in Wales. And uh, where are you from? Ammonford, not oh, far yeah, from, not Amonford, far from yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, I, I was, I, I never had any fucking intention of staying where I, where I was. Not bit of a broken home and what 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 not, but I just wanted to get the fuck away from there to be honest. So I just I left, and to be honest, that was a bit of an initiative for me and a bit of a fire starter to join the army because I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not fucking, you know, this is out of order. This I, I fell for it kind of thing. I was like, let's fucking do it. So that's why I joined. But there's a lot of things that I just don't. It just come to light for me on 9-11 that just blew my mind. And yeah, like I just mentioned here on America's America's fucking history with, you know, the things they get up to and whatnot. I just, uh, yeah, it just started, things just start, slowly started to come into place for me. And I know David I gets a bit of fucking grief, but he again, he's like Alex Jones. He talks a lot of fucking lunacy sometimes, but a lot of sort of stuff he talks is sense. And like, what do you think about 9-11? Well, do you know what? Just because you've mentioned uh, Alex Jones and David Icke on this podcast, it is, I, I reckon YouTube will not let the, this episode be monetized. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'm just saying. Wow. No, yeah, that's because you've mentioned the names. Wow. We'll see. I'll let you know. We'll see. Because well, you, you, on YouTube, when you put it on, you upload the video and then it goes, do you want to monetize this? So it's basically show ads. Oh, right? okay. You know, it asks you, but you have to have a certain number of subscribers first, right? Okay. It asks you, and then it checks. Wow. It checks the video, right? Uh, to see if, um, it you know, pr- goes through it and, and it's looking for certain words. All oh, right, wow. Yeah. And let's see. I reckon, because you mentioned, uh, Alex Jones will be right. I reckon you mentioned David Icke. It, it won't, won't uh, be It won't monetize. be on. It'll, oh, say, okay. it'll say, this video can't be monetized. It, uh, it's not suitable for... Um, it's not suitable for ad- advertise advertisers or whatever. Yeah, and they'll decide. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So oh, what do I think about what? Sorry. Yeah. See, so what do you think about that? I think you believe that. Did you believe that it was made to happen and then let to happen, or did, did you not? Did you? Are you under the impression where it was? They knew it was happening and they just went, okay, let's leave it. Oh God. Good because question. I, let's just me get into it. So I think, I think they the Americans had known about it. I think they were th- think. Let's look at Iraq. Okay, they'd already. Like, we, we were talking about using the bombs, keeping the war going. Keeping, it's twenty years ago now, isn't it? Yeah, Jesus. a long time ago. And uh, we talked about the, the keeping the war machine going. You know, keeping the funding coming in for war and this that. You're using bombs, etc. So they'd already been to Iraq. Everyone knows that Iraq. You know, weapons of mass destruction thing. He didn't have any. It just seems like it was a regime change sort of thing. Yeah. That was after nine eleven. Yeah. No, that was. Was it after nine eleven? 9-11 that in 2001 we invaded Iraq in 2003 oh okay yeah. alright um, so that had gone on so th- for me they'd already used it was the, the 9-11 was the, that was the catalyst for invading Iraq okay like, so, that, when, so uh, what, the Iraq invasion wouldn't have been possible without 9-11 so what, uh, what about the so why did they blame Bin, La- Bin Laden then for 9-11 and not invade Afghanistan straight away they did go, they went straight into Afghanistan did they okay alright well, there you go 2001, 2002 they went straight into Afghanistan Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, I can't remember the name of the op. And a two power went to Kabul, I think. Um, and there was and there was SF ops going on in the mountains. Okay. 
Yes. Right. Okay. So, uh, they, so they're already sort of all right. Then so they're already sort of moving the play, chess pieces into place because I think they 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 did it with Obama, didn't they, about Syria? That where the, he, he wanted to put a vote to the people to go to war in Syria, and everyone said no, we don't fucking want it, and he did it anyway. And he sent them there, and I think I think back then. They just needed to create something because the people don't want to go to war, do they? Not really. The people, the natural, the normal people don't want to send their sons and daughters off to fucking war, do they? So if they put it to a vote for the people, we need to go to war. They're going to go, no, what, what the fuck do we want to go over there for? Oh, and, oh, he's got weapons of mass destruction. So they give, and he's a fucking lunatic. And or we create a new fucking event with, where everyone goes. Like they did this in, with Pearl Harbor. With Pearl Harbor... The, the web, who, I can't remember who ran for president during 1944, but he got elected because he basically was saying, "We're not going to. I'm not going to send you our boys over to Europe and fight the war, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And then, and then Pearl Harbor happened, and he was like, "Well, we fucking can't have this. Look what's fucking happened here. We've got to get involved now." And that created, and I think that's that stemmed now from here. And George Bush, and they, they, what the fuck was the article that was written? The America. I'll have to. I'll, I'll get it for you. It, it, there was an article with. Those these heads of states um, were involved in, and then they all came into power at the same time, and they'd all written this sort of article on where they wanted to see America go, and they wanted to see a regime change in the Middle East, and the the, the cause would be their new Pearl Harbor. That's mentioned in this sort of document, right? I'm going fucking. I need to stick on one fucking thing here. Um, but yeah, I, 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 the, the structures of the buildings as well. Okay. So, so there was three towers that fell down on 9-11, not two. Oh, back to America now. Okay. Yeah, back to America. Sorry. <laughs> it's fucking hell. It's just, it's so fucking big and there's so much to cover. Let's try and stick to one. Day. So the, the buildings, right? So they were hit by, they hit, hit by planes, okay? There was another building that fell down called Tower 7. The official report of that falling down is an office furnishings fire, okay? Have you ever seen, have everyone ever seen the footage of the office furnishings fire? It's got one strip of fucking fire around it. There was a guy named Larry Silverstein who was renting the building or had the lease for the building. And he was on public bro- broca- public service broadcaster saying that he had spoke to a the fire chief and said, well, there's been such a loss of life today. You know, let's just pull the building. Let's just pull it. And it fell like a fucking... How did it fall? Like a fucking controlled explosion, didn't it? Just collapsed on itself. It was in free fall speed, up free fall speed, and just collapsed. So you've got to get detonate. You don't just if a building's on fire, you're not going to then run in and put the detonators in here. That has to be done weeks in advance. Yeah, it's and then you go back to the to the towers. Buildings like that cannot fall by being hit by a fucking plane. What's a plane made out of? Titanium, aluminium, or something like that? Or light metal? It's not going to fucking bring the building down, is it? And even if it does, the, the center complex of the building, that concrete thing, is going to be standing, isn't it? Look at that building that got hit in, where was it? In Was it Libya? Beirut? No, it was in, it was in Beirut. Is it with all the uranium in the bunker? Oh, Beirut, yeah. Fucking Lebanon. one of the largest explosions ever recorded, and the building still stood. And it's built in fucking Beirut. <laughs> It's it shook the whole fucking city. Have you seen? There's a 30 minute video of people recording it, and they've taken all the clips from people. It's blown them on their feet, off their feet, like blow all blown all the windows, fucking everything, and the building still stood. Are we are we fucking stupid? Do you know what I mean we? Fall, I th- I honestly think we've fallen for it big time. How how can a building fall from being hit by a plane? It's like me throwing. Something like my the scale of that. Say that's one of the twin towers. Me throwing something at it like that. That's what it's like, isn't it? Even if it pierces it, it's not going to fucking go through it. A toothpick. If you give me it's a toothpick, not, really sharp. Simple. It's not as simple. Is okay. It's not you know. Sim- you know why you think. Yeah. I. I, I do. Like, I don't. <laughs> oh God. You know what I think after episode yeah. one hundred. I. I don't. You know. I don't think it was the controlled demolitions. I think the planes hit and they fell down. And that's what that's what I believe. Okay. I, I believe I believe it is possible. That. Okay, but they they fell in free fall speed, so the and the, the I don't think it's falling. It's going to fall. But it's it's been hit at the top. It's not been hit at the bottom. So how and if it's going to come down, it's going to have resistance. It's going to pancake down, isn't it? It's not going to get faster. It's going to get slower. The problem, we, right? Here's the problem with this. Hang on. Here's the problem with this. We're trying to discuss the technicalities of this, and we ain't fucking engineers. 
No, no, there is actually a documentary you can watch for, called 9-11 um, Architects, and Ni- Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Yeah, but you, you'll be and able to... they'll talk about it. But you'll also be able to find, Steve, a documentary that says 9-11 Truth and says it is possible that they fall down from planes. Okay, well, let's let's build a skyscraper and let's fucking well, throw a plane at it. I, yeah, we had this conversation, didn't we? Yeah, that's... This is the thing with this. Like, we ain't experts. We're armchair experts. We are fucking armchair experts. So it's like, you believe one thing, I believe the other. We could argue to a blue in the face based on what we've read or what we've fucking watched or what yeah. we, the reality is we don't know any better, right? Yeah. I would like to know. But the only way, you, like we were saying there, the only way you could you could really find out is to build yeah. a yeah, scale demonstrate replica. It. Demonstrate it. Yeah. Some billion, UAE. Some billion UAE. Go and do it. Go and fucking do it. UAE. Yeah. Yeah. Fund it. Build a scale is, replica of the, of the Twin Towers. Fly two fucking planes yeah. in there and the while drones. Is, while, while or been, 1960s what, drone technology. Operation NORAD. <laughs> But yeah, but so you got so you got that that uh, obviously I'm, it just it just make, doesn't make sense to me. Why would it? they do it though? So why would they, to why get would us into they... a war? What to get us into a war? Need a, we could, need a reason but, to go. But you could do you can't that. just go for no reason. But you could do that without having to fucking drop your own buildings. How? Well, how were any of the wars done? We did it. In, we did it in, in uh, going into Kuwait in the nineties. Okay, I had a reason for that. We did it the Korean War. We did it for fucking Falklands War. We did it for. Uh, any reason well, the Falklands War, we got involved because they took yeah, I don't know why I mentioned, I don't know why I mentioned Falklands is a really bad example. Sorry, to, I didn't want to offend anyone. I fucking know. Stupid. That was a bad example. But, um, uh, yeah, Gulf War. But they, need, they need to get something going. How else? Vietnam. Are? Okay. But the, 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 I, know, I, don't, I don't really know. I'm going to get into Vietnam War. I'd like to know more about it. I don't know much about the Vietnam War. But anyway, back to 9 11. Go on. Yeah. So you've got. You, you got just, just have a think about it. Just have a think about a building coming down that's been hit by a fucking jet. <laughs> Okay, it's just not going to come down. All right, not, let, not, not for me, all right let's say down. let's say that's the case. It fell in free fall. Let's say that's the case. <laughs> let's say that's the case. And all right, so right, yeah, so there was we, a, right. Okay, so, so the building had fallen, right? Okay, so when you when the building fell, you'd think they'd have this fucking ridiculously intense investigation into what happened. They'd search the fucking place. They didn't. They just picked all the shit up, put it in the back of trucks, <laughs> sent it to fucking New Jersey, and got it fucking smelt. Sent it to China to get smelted. There was no, there was like barely any, why are they not fucking? That is fucking, a weird one about it, isn't it? They just that took everything and just sent it away. And they, they did get let people have a look at it, but it was like 30 <sighs> seconds. It was like, oh, have a quick look at it. And why are they taking it all the way to New Jersey? Like a 45 minute drive away. Well, it depends where the, it depends what, where the, where the <clears throat> stuff is, where the labs are, where the equipment is. They need to look at it. However, that is a weird one. It went, to a, it went to a scrapyard. That's where it went. Okay. It's fucking insane. But you, okay, so there's another no, one. I know, and it's the same with the Pentagon. It wasn't investigated very well. No. Like, it didn't. Like, cursory. And you would... I agree. That is a yeah. strange one about it. And the only reason I can see that that would... Why they would do that is to is to get the situation rectified ASAP in terms of visually, aesthetically, get get the, get the people back on top. Like, basically for morale, but also to reduce the... the, the um, Reduce the amount of propaganda that the terrorists, ISIS, who was it at the time? Who the fuck was it? Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda could uh, could use could could get from it footage aftermath. But of what? The but, 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 but what? But the buildings have already been hit by the planes. No, I know. Or I'm just saying that. I'm just what I'm saying is that's the only plausible reason I can think why they would go like just fuck, just clean this shit up, just let minimize minimize the advantage that could be gained from this by Al Qaeda. Right. That's all I'm saying is that's the only reason I can think why they yeah, would do the yeah. investigation. I know you don't believe. Oh, do you believe? That? I don't know if you believe that. Do, uh, do I believe what? That, that they got rid of it because they didn't want anyone to see it. To see the aftermath of it because everyone's gonna there's footage everywhere everyone's gonna see the aftermath of it oh i don't know why they i don't yeah. know why but they they did yeah okay so there was there, <laughs> was, there, was, there was that there was that and do you know the like the operation nora the drone thing where where that sort of gathering pace was from phone calls made on the planes okay so there was phone calls that was received by loved ones and stuff like that from people on the plane holding you it? it is fucking freezing Go on, control. and um so the pl- so uh, some of the planes that were, I think it was uh, I think which plane was it seven I'm not sure I'm not sure which fucking plane it was one of them that got hit they said they were making phone calls to loved ones uh, before the plane hit etc now on the way in it's one of the some of the times of the phone calls was the plane's altitude is around thirty thousand feet and it came from a mobile phone so they were making mobile phone calls at thirty thousand feet. There was an, there was another. Uh, this is legit. How do you do that? You can't. You do can't that. do that. You can't do that. I there was another. The other one of the other aircrafts. They said they they called off an air phone. You know, one of the phones. You put your credit card in. Phone phone off there. The plane that left and struck the um, one of the buildings didn't have air phones in it. 
So then the FBI changed the story and said, oh, they must have done it off the mobile. And then there was there was a call made. A, a lot of the a lot of the people who received the calls said they would. It just sounded like they were spoke Definitely, to. It, was it not? They said it was. Did they say mobile phone and not a sat phone? Because it could have been. Because you do a call from there. But Hey, it could have been, but, heart, but, but, heart, the, but, the, but the altitude, is, the altitude thing is still strange, isn't it? You can't. Well, make, no, you can, you're, it's year two thousand and one. You can't make a fucking phone call on a plane with a with a with a, with a, no, but you, you a cell phone. You, but it's sat phone, you could. Well, Who, who's got a sat you, phone? Uh, hang on, so, but, you, but you would struggle to get a signal inside because you need line of sight down antenna. Yeah. Mm. The phone calls are very peculiar. There was and there was another one where the phone where one of the planes had crashed. And whoever made the phone call off his mobile, was the call was still active for about 15 minutes after the plane hit. Say that again. What, the, one of the, when one of the planes hit and someone made a phone call off their phone, the phone call was still live 15 minutes after the plane had hit. It's all very, that's all very fucking strange. Very strange. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot of um, anonymy, an, I can't even ever say that, anonymies. Is that is it? Anomalies. <laughs> Anomalies, Anomalies yeah. about the phone calls and the legitimacy of the, the phone calls that were made. Why is it so why is the why is nine eleven so so relevant to you now, twenty years later? Because you obviously you hang a lot on it. I'm not saying it's irrelevant, I'm just asking. But you. It, 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 it helps me realise that the these people are not honest people. Don't fucking believe what the government are telling you. For the love that. of God. These people are not your friends. Don't think that they wouldn't kill 3,000 of their own people because they went to Iraq and Afghanistan and they killed 500,000 people. You know? They, they, they don't give a fuck. It, I, it's, it's, about, it's, all about the, it's all about money and all that sort of stuff. That's what I believe. I, but we went to Afghanistan under good... I went there under good impression, uh, uh, good motives, you know, fucking uh, queen and country, etc., all this sort of stuff. And the Taliban were doing some fucking nasty stuff out there. They were, you know, they were ruling the country. They were fucking beheading people. They were inc increasing Sharia laws everywhere. So, you know, we went there for good, some good stuff. But a part of me just thinks, was I fooled? Was a part of me fucking led down a garden path with that? Go on. With like, because that was the reason why I joined the army was 9-11. I saw that when I'm fucking going. I was a big part of it, as well as getting out of a sh shit little town. Shout out to Hammondford. Shout out to Hammondford. There's, <laughs> there's some nice people there. There's not some nice people there, but I, I don't like it. I, I prefer to get out of there, to be honest. Mm, I agree with you, mate. It's uh, the the you know the 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 pretenses that we send to places or we go to places are not what we're told is not what the truth is. No, I, I believe that, yeah. and it's all about power and money, you yeah. know. And um, I wholeheartedly believe that. And you should, yeah. be, you should be able to question, no matter how fucking daft your idea is. Oh yeah, uh, but that's not to say that there isn't positive impacts that can happen when you go. Yeah, we made positive impacts in Afghan, albeit on on a small scale, a short term. When you think back and go, well, that fucking didn't last. Yeah, same with Iraq, you know. But again, going back in, on on the whole Noam Chomsky, how the world works thing. Um, it's not in it's not in America it's not in America's interests to have uh, stable countries. Developing yeah. stable countries, exactly, yeah. dem democratic countries, or just stable countries in whatever guise. China's not d democracy. Fucking stable, big threat. Iraq was a big threat. Libya was a big threat because mm -hmm. they were they were getting stable. Afghan was becoming a threat because yeah. it was becoming stable. Yeah. That's not to say that it was great, but you get if you got one ruling power in Afghan's case, the Taliban, it would have been the Taliban. Um, they're, they're more stable than what they were. They can yeah. achieve more. They become more of a threat. Which is why Iran's so fucking dangerous. Look at Iran. Yeah, they are squared away. Yeah, they've, they got, they, they've got WMDs. They're not going invading them. Away. away. You, you can't fuck with them. Massive threat. Yeah. Massive threat. You know, it's one of the reasons. If you look at if you look at the places that we've gone and been involved with on the map, and try to have influence, you know, have when I say we, I mean the West. Look at those places. Stick pin point, Stick pins in them, on the map, and have a look what they're yeah. all bordered yeah, with, yeah, yeah. or what they're right next to. All surrounding Iran. Fucking story, Iran. Yeah. That whole area. Mm -hmm. It's the only reason as well, or one of the only reasons as well, we are so supportive of Israel in the mm -hmm. Middle East situation. Yeah. You know, and you know my fucking thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why, because yeah. there is a massive threat to. 
the US to the to the West. Yeah. If because they that that region will become stable, become more powerful, more money will go there, which means less money to the West, and they will become a military, you know, a military problem yeah. um, potentially. Maybe the, maybe the Americans are doing it for the good of themselves and the West by disrupting it. Like maybe their goal is. They can see what's going to come, this and they're is, like, uh, uh, this, "Okay, we need to keep this fucking going here." Exactly. No matter if it's right or wrong. And this like, is the b- it is the bigger, bigger, bigger picture. Is what is if if that's what I just described in like getting reducing the likelihood of other thriving countries who get stronger and could become equal in or more in power, a uh, more powerful or unite, than America, unite. right? Mm-mm. Yeah, we unite. Well, yeah. Yeah, uh, of Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, all yeah, of them, yeah, all sorry, of them sorry, are lying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry. So, is it wrong to, if that if that's been done? So making sure places are d- unstable. Look at Iraq. We fucking left. That place is carnage. Yeah. If, there's been no improvement. No. It's absolute carnage. But we ain't going back in there. No. We went in there when Saddam was had decent power over yeah. the people. The place was pretty squared away. Yes, there was some. Uh, there was well, you had a lot of atrocities going on between the Baathists and the um, oh, Sunnis and Shias. Sunnis and Shias, yeah. right? Uh, but by and large, it was doing pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, squared away. Even with all the sanctions and that, we went in, we fucked it up, we left. It's now carnage. We ain't going back in there. They go, oh, we need to go in there and, squ- and like help them out. We ain't doing it. No. We want instability. Mm-hmm. So the, again, going back to the question. So is it a bad thing? Right. <laughs> exactly. If exactly. we're doing this, well, let's say we, let's think of America. If America are doing this because that is what key is is the safest for their nation. Yeah. Doing all that bad stuff to other nations yeah. to keep their own people yeah. squared away. Now, is that bad? <laughs> is that wrong? <laughs> I'm not saying it's right, but you have to go bigger, bigger picture. You're just looking at you're looking picture. at you're just looking after yourself, aren't you? It's all you're doing is you're looking after you're looking after number one, but you can't tell. You can't tell the people what you're planning because they'll think that you're fucking out of your mind. You know, you're fucking crazy. We're not doing that. And so you have to create events like this. And it's a detriment about. of our fellow human beings. Exactly. You know, yeah. you know it's, uh, my God, we've got to eat on that one. But yeah. But yeah the, so yeah, the, the, the phone calls were obviously fucking suspicious. Oh, back in 9 11. Yeah. <laughs> there was also a lot of, there was un- an unprecedented amount of war games that day as well. So there's a lot of aircrafts getting scrambled here, there, and everywhere. So there'd be no aircraft in sort of the vi- in the vicinity. There was um, a, there's a code as well. There's a, a an agency called NORAD, and I don't know what it stands for. It's basically the, the the aviation. North American Air Defence, I think. Boom. Something check like that, that out. Yeah. And um, they're under instructions where if a plane's been hijacked, you type in a four-digit code for distress, right? So if you pilot's flying, there he goes. He's off. He can hear distress. Do you not think he's got time? Every single one of them hasn't got time to go. I think that was five, but even there, they go, that's even longer. But I, there's a distress call straight away. They never once, I think over the radio, I never once said, you know, distress call. On any anything, of the planes? On any of the planes. The Pentagon plane had gone completely off course, turned around, it was in the air 80 minutes, the Pentagon plane. I turned around, never once had anyone intercepted it or asked anything about it. Just fucking wandered straight into the Pentagon. Why are they not, why are the Pentagon not challenging them? Where's the surface to air missiles? There's a, there was a, are we doing all right for time? Yeah. There was a golfer, a, uh, I can't remember his fucking name. He, he died in a private jet. There's some, um, there was a, uh, an oxygen fucking issue and the plane had fucking, there was no oxygen in the plane. So they all collapsed and the plane was just going along. And within like 10 minutes or some of that, because they hadn't relayed back to NORAD, NORAD had scrambled the plane and fucking shot it out of the air just in case it flew, legit, in case it threw into a, a city or something like that. Like that's what you're dealing with. 10 minutes they hadn't answered and there was a jet in the air. It's all very fucking suspicious, in it? Very suspicious. The bloke who flew into the Pentagon, and Annie Hanjour, they all went to flight school, all the pilots, in the U.S., they were going to fucking, yeah, flight school. And they were banned. Annie Hanjour and one of his muckers, they were so incompetent, they were banned from hiring a one-engine Cessna because they were so shit. <sighs> it doesn't mean they can't fly a plane, though. It's probably but safety failures. They were, you they can were, fail a drive. You can fail getting your car license, mounting the fucking curb. Good, good point. Nigel Mansell. Good point. But they, they were talking about the spiral 
that the plane apparently did when it hit the Pentagon and there was pilots there that said that's a very fucking difficult maneuver to pull off and go we'd struggle but we'd struggle to do that. Norad. <laughs> Some fucking ninja on his Xbox pad. <laughs> It is hard. I remember playing Flight Simulator when I was a kid, yeah. late nineties. You ever play that Microsoft Flight Simulator? No. Oh, Sounds mate, fucking it's, boring. It's like oh, wait, it's a train spot. I think. I'd you have a hat on as well. It's not even Captain. a game. I wouldn't even. <laughs> I wouldn't even. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even describe it as um, a game. No. It's literally on your laptop. You, fl- you can fl- you can pick the plane you want to fly, and it's all the controls on the laptop. You can use the button. No, all the, mate, impossible. Yeah. Impossible. You couldn't even get the plane going. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's on the fucking <laughs> computer when you fucking sat down. There was a what's the what's the other little thing that was suspicious? There was a you know about the Sean Atwood one, don't you? With the options trading, that's fucking. No, that's, go on. That's a weird one. Again, I have told you about this, but you've probably forgotten. So Sean Atwood was a uh, a drug dealer, <laughs> <laughs> but he was living in Arizona and he was a trader on Wall Street. He's like a reformed character now. He lives back in the UK as a true crime podcast, and he was on Wall Street doing options trading. Options trading is high frequency trading. So if a share goes up ten percent the option one goes up 100%, or you lose all your fucking money. It's like high gear trading. And he, high risk as well, right? Yeah, yeah, very high risk. Now, he'd usually do a 1,000 contracts of options a month, right? That's fucking standard. Before 9-11 and two weeks before, the options trading on the airlines to fail went through the fucking roof. He said that it made, he goes, it made, it made uh, the Wall Street Journal... Um, like that on one of the like the week before or on the week before 9/11, basically saying uh, unbelievable amounts of uh, options trading on the airlines to fail, um, and then obviously we fucking all know what happened then. That's how fucking strange is that? People gambling on the airlines to fail a week before that, and making a fortune. How many people were doing that? He I, he was on. The True Geordie podcast, and he said that they were they, they, he did about twenty thousand contracts in about two weeks when he usually does a thousand a month. No, some unprecedented amount of number. It made the Wall Street Journal that week. There were incredible amounts of money um, uh, options trading for the airline to fail. It's fucking insane. What the, what the fuck? <clears throat> Uh, come on, options trading. That's all inside of that. Even he says he goes. That's somebody knowing something about, you know, what's going on. It's insane. Just everyone should everyone should have a little look at it and just open mindedness. You don't have to fucking believe me or whatever. You know, I could be fucking wrong. Could be completely wrong. But just the structures of the buildings and that fucking Tower Seven falling and all that sort of stuff is fucking insane. It's insane. Can, these people. They can fly a drone six fucking 40 years before it happened. You're telling me they can't shoot down a plane or intercept a plane that's been hijacked? It's fucking bollocks. Anyway, <laughs> there's that one. We've got about 10 minutes. Right, okay. It's nearly 10 o'clock. Yeah, okay. And it's players are arguing at 10.30. 10 the monk's just... Remember the monk? No, fucking hell. Mate, he's playing today. Is he? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's playing both matches. I think he's on the bench for one of them. <laughs> Uh, mate, release, release the monk. Release the monk. Yeah, he's just trying to call on me. Um, what have we not covered that you want to cover? I think that's about it, really. There was Epstein, but there's not enough fucking time for Epstein, is there now? Nowhere near. Very peculiar way of dying. <laughs> <laughs> Very fucking strange way of dying. This is the problem with conspiracies, though, isn't it? How blatant is that death? How fucking blatant is it? Mm. And people... Oh, did you see McAfee's died? Who's McAfee? F- fucking John McAfee. Billionaire. No, not heard about McAfee this. Software. No. Oh, I know McAfee Software now. Towing, yeah. Was not towing the line. And has uh, been found dead. Oh dear. No, yeah, I, didn't I think know he got about nicked this. as well. He got accused of something. He got nicked. I, I don't know. I need to really know that full story. I actually. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, idea. McAfee mate. died. He was murdered. <laughs> yeah. I got Eps- no idea. Epstein 2.0. I got no idea. But yeah, there's, it's. This is the problem with fucking... Like, I don't believe in flat earth. I'm not one of those fucking... Right, I've, sat, you know I've sat at a You're wedding saying, yeah. next to a blo- Welsh guy, actually, who was a flat earther. Fuck. There, and mate, Fuck. adult, trying to convince me that they were, the earth was flat. I work for a satcoms company. Yeah, yeah. I work for a company that flies satellites <laughs> around, around the, the fucking earth. earth. Don't try and convince me yeah. it's flat earth. <laughs> this, 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 is, this is another thing with the fucking... With the YouTube thing. It's like... Flat Earthers have still got pages, and Flat Earthers can still spiel their bullshit. I love it though. But other fucking people get shut down. It's fucking. Oh, that's a good point, it's, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. free speech, dangerous information. Yeah. Well, it is dangerous. But it's good as well. Yeah. 
It is dangerous, but it's good as well. You have to have it. But yeah. Anyway, what's uh, where where do you think we're going to move with this cigar business? What do you mean? Like, I think. Uh, do you think the army will give us a chance? I don't think the army will let us come anywhere near us. I don't think we'll. What do you mean the army? I don't think the army themselves. <laughs> I love the way your mind works. Go on. I want to hear why. The army. The, 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 I can't see the army buying cigars of us to have in their mess. <laughs> Neither can I, mate. No, I just. It's, <laughs> But, I, I, it, but the, my plan, my idea initially was that I thought, oh, for the mess. Yeah, I thought they'd, I thought they fucking love that. I was thinking every fucking unit. Well, it's not the army wouldn't do it. So what Steve is talking about is one of the things we're gonna, do, we are doing is uh, with combat cigars. Is we're gonna provide, pers- so you can buy a combat cigar from combat cigars. Um, we, yeah, we have got three blends: victory, fucking oath of allegiance, and we got the last post. I fucking love the victory, mate. Anyway, um, we can personalize them. So for a promotion or a leave-in thing, whatever, you can come and buy a, a tin of combat cigars of us. They'll come, but we'll also add a personalised band on the cigar, yeah. for example, fucking with a name of something or a battle on it or whatever, but we can then provide it to, you know, messes, sergeants' messes, officers' messes and that. And the army wouldn't buy them off us, mate, but someone, one of the blokes would. Yeah, but then... Except for an event. It's yeah. not, we'd be fine. I don't the think problem is smoking on camp. That's the yeah. drama. I, I, I think the fucking um, brigadier or whatever on camp will see old get a whiff of that and go get that out of the fucking mess. Because it'll, it go, it'll go around fucking camp quicker than chlamydia. People will fucking hear about it. It'll pass around the mess. Look. Have you heard about three parents fucking officers mess? They've got cigars in the mess. Oh, fucking hell. Maybe we, we should get them. Or oh, if we don't, can't get them, we'll grass them up. It'll, there's no way it'll happen. Mate, you have a very... Mate, that's not how it works. What do you think those messes... <laughs> <laughs> they're not that bad. Good people. Yeah, it might, be, it might be good people, but it's, it's keeping mouths shut, isn't it? Everyone's going to post a picture on their Instagram. It's the same as Binds, though. Anyway, some of, anyway, if you want to buy a, like, a job lot of cigars, I suppose, <laughs> for like, an event or whatever, a wedding or whatever, you just ask us. Yeah. And if you are buying them for a mess, and you can have a, a, a mess function and dish them out for, I don't know, a dining out or whatever. A boxing, uh, boxing night or whatever. You know, a box night or whatever, or, sp- or some fucking event, or yeah, whatever. Hit us up. Um, hit us up, we'll do them for you. Uh, and by the way, the sticker idea that you had is fucking tremendous. It's a fucking great idea. Because you can, st- like, uh, shout out to Andrew Corcoran. Uh, he's put, has put one on his chainsaw and has cut down a tree with it. Has he? Yeah. So, he's got so the, the cigar, the bands on the combat cigars, they are made. So when when you, you know, you get a cigar, for those who aren't connoisseurs, like me, I'm not a fucking connoisseur, but those doing this. You, you you just normally you like smoke the cigar and it, when it gets about halfway down you take the band off like the name of the cigar or whatever on it. On ours, when you you take the band off, you can remove the backing of the band and it's a sticker, so you can stick it, so you can collect them up and fucking stick them wherever you want to stick them. It's good good marketing. And no it. no other cigar does that. No uh, no, uh, no no other cigar does that. No other cigar, no other cigar does, that. does that. No my idea. And that was just down. I know. By <laughs> the way, I wouldn't I wouldn't um you know get, try and get anyone to go up to a fucking tree and smoke a cigar while you're trying to cut it down i don't you know i don't i don't think that's a good idea at all but he's a professional so he's okay make sure you smoke it in woods where there's a fire break as well yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and don't go in don't go into i've got some advice don't go into the fucking tobacco business no the it's a fucking nightmare good. yeah jesus christ epic anyway should we gonna wrap it up yeah let's wrap it up uh Mate, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been great. I'm going to yeah. go and get fucking crushed now by fucking, yeah, uh, by Yokozuna. Yeah, Force of Barbarians, yeah. big day. Uh, for Rugby for Heroes, Mega. Combat Cigars at Credit UK, Shimmer <laughs> Pluck. <laughs> <laughs> 9 11. Uh, oh, wait, shout out to Nelson. Shout out to Nelson. Shout out to Nelson, Nelson. yeah. Our rest in peace, our, rest in um, peace Nelson, yeah. our cigar man over there. He's unfortunately died of COVID. Rolled uh, so the the batch the the, the the stock we've got in now the last ones that will ever be rolled by Nelson because he died of coronavirus unfortunately shout Nelson he was uh, instrumental behind setting up the company mm-hmm. instrumental uh, in fact we, we wouldn't have happened without him actually. no it wouldn't have yeah yeah. Um, yeah and he was dead rest in peace rest in peace Nelson rest in peace this podcast yeah rest in peace nice hey, to see a pleasure yeah mate we'll have a good day we'll have a good day today yes cool yeah nice.